I lived and breathed music when I was a kid. Like music was my world. Um, I'm the youngest of a pretty, well, I say pretty big Italian family these days, but back in the day, a few generations ago, they used to have seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 kids. Um, like I said earlier, I'm the fourth of four kids. We had two wonderful parents that groomed us and taught us right from wrong, but it was always around music, whether it was in our house or in the car, going to our soccer games, you know, over visiting other people. There was always music uh, in the air. Joining me today as my guest is Rick Campanelli. Rick is a Canadian media personality. He's known for his role as DJ, video jockey for Much Music, and host for Entertainment Tonight Canada. He is here today to talk about, and I'm so excited about the upcoming 299 Queen Street West, the Much Music Experience, Experience Tour, which will be an experience. <laughs> um, <laughs> Welcome, Hi, Rick. Oh, it's so good to be here. Thank you so much for having me on. Yes, you know what? I read that you wanted to be a phys ed teacher. So how did that <laughs> go from? <laughs> I did. I, I, I took phys ed in university and, um, and all my older siblings were going on to have these uh, educational careers in terms of being teachers, whether it was high school, uh, grade school. I just thought I was going to fall in line and be the fourth Campanelli kid, the fourth of four Campanelli kid to be a teacher. Um, but then I, I won this, I entered and won a contest at Much Music back in 1994 that sort of um, changed my career direction um, after winning the contest because I win this contest, I get my foot in the door of this magical world of music video which was much music and um i guess we can say the rest is history <laughs> i didn't look back i thought i could always fall back on teaching if this much music thing doesn't work out <laughs> but uh it seemed to work out for for a while <laughs> so yeah. yeah what what made you decide to apply you must have been a really wanted to you're right into well i i lived and breathed music when I was a kid, like music was my world. Um, I'm the youngest of a pretty, well, I say pretty big Italian family these days, but back in the day, a few generations ago, they used to have seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 kids. Um, like I said earlier, I'm the fourth of four kids. We had two wonderful parents that groomed us and taught us right from wrong, but it was always around music, whether it was in our house, or in the car, going to our soccer games, you know, over visiting other people. There was always music uh, in the air, uh, whether it was my, my parents' genres, which was, you know, it's Sinatra, Dean Martin, uh, Sammy Davis Jr., Bobby Darin, uh, the list goes on in, in their world. Or if it was my older siblings listening to David Bowie, The Who, The Beatles, The Stones, Jimi Hendrix, we were always surrounded by music. So that's where my love started. Um, and I'm so grateful to have parents and older siblings that loved music back in the day. And that just triggered my love for music. And um, yeah, so I guess you could say when I was, <laughs> the story goes, uh, Kiss came to town when I was seven years old and my older brothers got tickets for it. And I begged and pleaded with my parents to go see Kiss when I was seven and like any parent at the time, they it was a hard no <laughs> for, his, for their seven year old. But my older brothers were, you know, they're like, what are they like four and six years older than I am. So they got to go with their, with their friends. Um, but yeah, I just, I loved music. I loved going out buying cassettes. I loved going out and seeing bands perform and, um, I can tell you right now, Christine, I still do to this day. It's a different experience uh, for me, but but it all began back when I was such such a young kid with music. Well, also fitness too. 
having the fitness entertainment, I mean, that is just a wonderful, you know, uh, you're, you're living your passion, you're turning your passion into a successful career. And you're, I mean, now well, I want to ask you your workouts. Like, I mean, if, like, yeah. Um, well, that's, those are the two loves, two passions for sure. Music, entertainment, acting, whatever, um, fitness, staying healthy, staying active. Um, I played sports my whole life went into university for physical education. So yeah, we got to take care of our bodies. Our bodies are our temples. We were only given one. So my wife and I both instill in our kids, like, you know, let's go for a bike ride. Let's go for a walk. Let's get out there. And especially in the summertime, you, you guys have it good over there in Vancouver because every day is so mild and beautiful out there. Um, but even in the cold winter months and days over here, we, we like to get out and, and, keep busy and keep active and got to keep the body moving. My dad's 87 and he still goes for long bike rides and walks and he keeps so active, not just physically, but mentally as well. So, um, yeah, he, he taught my, my parents taught us many things in life and, um, you know, being fit and keeping active was one of the main ones. Yes. And it crosses over to, you know, becoming successful in other areas of your life. And do you think that has something to do with, being well nicknamed rick the temp you know getting that you just it's so wonderful. well I, I was always a very positive guy i i've been positive for as long as i could remember you know um it it takes less muscles in the face to smile than to frown you know more muscles to frown why do you want to frown i get you got to be happy you got to be positive you got to be optimistic in life there's going to be doors slammed in our face all the time there's going to be you know dark roads ahead but if you're positive about things if you see that light at the end of that tunnel that's my only approach in life and that's the way I've been I'm 53 now I've been that way for as long as I can remember there's going to be down days there's going to be obstacles and hardships in life and we we overcome we all we all do and um we get through those days and we put them in the rear view and and continue on so being positive having that positive um uh, optimistic approach is is the only approach I know. Yes, no, it's wonderful, Rick. And I can you tell the audience um, your first day on the job? Oh, you gosh. know, with music. What did it feel like? Well, my first day as an official VJ, I remember it was early 1996. It was in February of 1996, and I got to introduce a tragically hip video, and I was so not ready to be an on-air personality because like I said, Christine, I, I'm a phys ed grad. I was going to be a teacher uh, or a physiotherapist along those lines somewhere, something to do with physical, the, the body. Um, yeah. So to be put in front of cameras, to be put in a studio with a crew and everyone looking at you, it's like, it was very nerve wracking. It really was. The only thing that I had going for me is that my thumb was on the pulse of music. I, I lived music uh, as a teenager, uh, as a young adult in my early 20s, you know, and getting this job as, as a much music DJ. Of course, you need to know your music. You need to be knowledgeable. So I had that to fall back on. I might have been so uncomfortable in front of the camera, but I knew what I was talking about. And with all things in life, you know, we don't master them overnight. It takes practice. It takes training. It takes patience. And I think I, I finally got my legs uh, as a much music VJ, maybe eight to 10 months into my job. I felt like I was hitting a stride, you know? So yeah, that first day I must've sweat through my shirts. <laughs> I, I was so nervous, but you got to get through that first day with anyone starting a new job. That first day is the hardest, but if you can get through that first day, um, you know, you know, you'll, you'll learn to love what you're doing even more because you'll, you'll, you'll fit right in and, and it'll just be uh, second nature. Yes. And also your positive attitude, right? That, that helped. <laughs> that helps. That helps yeah. too. Yeah, Cause, cause I was lacking the confidence and I was lacking, you know, I wasn't comfortable with my surroundings, but yeah, being positive, being, being optimistic, not dwelling on the fact that sure, I'm going to make mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes, um, but not dwelling on those and not let them, not letting them saturate so much as 
to where it becomes a, a, a mental mind game, you know, because that can really, really affect someone's uh, approach to things, especially in that first day at work or first week. You, you, you let those slide. You, let, you, you move on and you correct your mistakes and you try to do better next time. Mm-hmm. And know, it took me a long time for that. But but, here you are. I mean, it's, it's so, oh. and now we're going to talk about the much music experience. Now, oh. viewers or may not know about much music. I mean, I, 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 have to, I, so to tell you, if I may, I was like, oh my goodness, this is awesome. So tell yeah. us yeah. The, yeah. the channel. Yeah, it was it was an awesome um, eleven years for me at Much Music. I was there from ninety four to two thousand five, and then then I had the opportunity to go on to another show in Canada called Entertainment Tonight. But um, those eleven years at Much Music, I tell you, they were magical. Um, it was a it, it was it was surreal uh, at times because here's this kid growing up loving music. And now I'm getting to interview the bands that are making this music that I'm loving. Like bands came in all the time, Uh, whether it were boy bands or bubblegum pop bands or rock bands or, you know, hip hop acts or rappers, bands and artists were coming in every day, sometimes multiple times a day. We'd have multiple bands coming in. Um, So now I'm living it and it goes by that like that when you're living it because if you're loving something so much it goes by fast right like it's it's what it's when you're not enjoying something it takes hours to go by but my 11 year career it's to me looking back at it now it flew by so here comes sean menard with this idea of making a documentary about this staple this iconic music station that we all grew up watching here in canada uh, when it was a simpler time, um, he got all this archival footage from the golden years uh, and he turned it into this beautiful documentary where it starts right from the beginning and how it was all created right up until the end of where it started fading away. And um, it just we're going to be reliving some amazing moments that I'm sure if you're watching this documentary, you'll say to yourself, yes, I remember watching that live when that first aired. Well, Sean brings it all together so beautifully. And I was, I was fortunate enough to, to join him down in Austin, Texas for the world premiere at South by Southwest uh, earlier this year. And to watch it on a big screen, um, it, was, it was unbelievable. It was a pinch me moment to see it finally happening because there's been a lot of talk about much music documentaries and, and it much music meant so much to us as young Canadians growing up in this country, because it seemed like, well, people call it, people call us the babysitters. You know, when, when kids got home from school, you'd put on much music. If their parents were still at work, you'd be watching much music. And there was Rick or Sookian or, or, or Bill or Erica or Steve Anthony, whoever it was. And we were just glued to what they were doing. So to relive all these special moments in this two hour documentary, it's a, it's a roller coaster of emotions. It was for me anyway. And I'm sure it's going to be the same way for a lot of uh, people that watch it. Yeah. So how involved were you with the documentary, Rick? Oh gosh. When Sean called me up to be part of it, it was basically, uh, he did a, a, a few hour interview with me. I think it was like maybe two or three hours. I was sitting at his kitchen table in Toronto. We were talking about the good old days and it's, he just uses our, our audio. Um, and as you'll see, when you see the movie, all the visuals are from yesteryear, all the, it's all archival footage that Sean pieces together over top of all the VJs or former VJs talking about our experiences. So it was very minimal. I, I, I talked to him for a few hours one day. He, he pressed record and he did that with, uh, gosh, uh, a lot of other VJs, former VJs. I think maybe close to 10 of us, uh, like Steve Anthony and Michael Williams and Erica and Bill Walichka and George Strombolopoulos. Uh, Sukian is a part of it. Nemegeni, Monica Diol, Mike Campbell, I believe, is in there. So. Wow. I think Craig Halkett as well. But yeah, he just talked to us about our experiences and our stories. And he he looped that in with the archival footage that he pulled. 
you know, it's like, I mean, it was not scripted. It was just no. like changing music journalism or music. Uh, it's <laughs> it, it, it was TV off, off, off uh, the cuff. Um, it was like, you're right. Nothing was ever scripted. Like, of course we had an idea of where we were going when the Chili Peppers came in or when the Backstreet Boys came in. We had an idea of, okay, I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna talk about this now. And next we're gonna take an audience question. So it was all like, it was, all, it was a format to things, but yeah, never scripted because it was always live and you never knew what people were gonna say I'm talking people from the bands that we were talking to or people from the audience that came in to join us in the environment. You never knew which direction it was going to go. That's why you can never script anything um, because we loved when it went off on a tangent or we loved when it went off the rails because that made for, as we all know now, more interesting TV. Yeah. So there'll never be another much music ever. Uh, I mean, Christine. It was a magical time. It really was. And and those of us that got to be a part of it on the inside in the much environment, we I will forever be grateful for those who hired me, for those who got to witness it as an audience standpoint, like I did from in the 80s. I was an audience. I was watching from the outside. But we were all so fortunate, whether you were a viewer, a crew member, a VJ, whatever you were, it was just a magical, special time to be part of music. And, um, and, and, and you know, until it started changing for, for, for the worse, unfortunately. Yeah, well, you know, the thing with now is so wonderful. It's going to start September 22nd, 13 cities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you going to be it, at every city or? I am going to make a, a, a valid effort to okay. go to every stop because much music, it was a big part of my life. It, you know, let's not beat around the bush. It was my first real job out of university. It, um, it was a place where everyone sort of wanted to be <laughs> like cheers. like <laughs> Everybody knows your name. Sure. Um, so I'm going to go across Canada because we went across Canada when we were VJs to visit the people that were watching us. We went to sand jobs and snow jobs and different events all over the place. So I'm going to make a, 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 an effort to go uh, to, and, and touch down in all the cities across Canada with Sean, with the crew, uh, to answer the questions, to be part of it again, and just to relive those magical moments for you know, even that one night, um, uh, yeah, it kicks off in Toronto on September 22nd. And then we make our way across until the end of November to 13 uh, different cities. Well, 12 after Toronto, I guess. Yeah. But it's, oh, it's going to be super exciting. And, yeah. and to come out to Vancouver with the documentary and the whole Much Music experience. Vancouver is one of those stops when I was part of Much Music we used to come to quite frequently. Vancouver was up there. Um, of course, Montreal as well, because Music Goose was in Montreal. But but there was offices out in, in uh, Vancouver as well, because Much West was based uh, out of Vancouver. And then, of course, a show called Going Coastal from Halifax to Vancouver. So Vancouver played uh, a, a huge role in what we did at Much Music. So to, to be able to come out to Vancouver, um, I'm not sure exactly when the date is. I believe it's later in November. Uh, I'm not sure if you yeah. have it in front of you. November 24th, I believe. No, November 24th. So, yeah, yeah I, I definitely don't want to miss Vancouver. That's for sure. Had some amazing times in Vancouver. Oh, I'm so excited. And if people want yeah. more information, they can check it out, right? For, oh, like, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. So, and, 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 and kudos to Sean Menard for even going down this hole of creating a documentary and doing it right. He He, he did it exactly the way... I think people are going to expect it. You know, Sean, he gave us the Carter effect, you know, the Vince Carter uh, story. He did that one. That was, you know, it, it premiered at TIFF, uh, you know, years ago. So to, to have his name involved with this much music documentary, for him to be the director of it, we're just so, so grateful for Sean's abilities. And we're so honored that he was uh, in charge of putting this all together. Congratulations. I'm just, you know, as I said, I'm excited. And what, oh. what is next? What is next for you? Like, well, I, you know, I just finished a run at uh, morning radio. 
in Toronto, yeah. which lasted 13 months. And you know what? It, it, was, it was a good run. It was a very early start to my mornings. Christine, I was up at 3.30 every morning and into bed at like 7 p.m. every night. So, you know, it sort of takes away a little bit. You know, I've got a young family. I was in bed before them every night because I had to get <laughs> my sleep. So unfortunately, <laughs> that came to an end in January. And now I'm, I'm doing a ton of uh, hosting events and emceeing events and uh, a lot of social media partnering these days, which is, is has been a lot of fun. But I've got a few things planned um, for the next few months, uh, planning on launching a few different projects. So, yeah, there's always something new to try in life. And I want to make sure I try just about everything until I can't do anything anymore. So, yeah, I'll, I'll be back <laughs> in some format positive. soon. Yeah, you're positive. The only way to be. The only way to be. Contagious, you know. And uh, is there anything else you'd like to add? No, I, I'm just I'm just really looking forward to going across Canada with this tour. Like this is it's an honor to be able to be part of this. Um, I'm just a small part of it, but I'm honored to be on this ride across Canada to relive all these moments that a lot of us grew up watching and 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 just to be part of something. I'm just I, I can't express how excited I am to, to be oh. part of it. It's uh this is going to it's going to last forever in our hearts and much music will always be part of us somehow. But so to be part of a documentary and a tour uh, of this magnitude and, and stopping, I wish we could have stopped at way, way more cities. But it's just it's just uh, talking to Sean about it. It's just so complex to put a tour together mm -hmm. like this. Um, mm -hmm. But you never know. Maybe, maybe there'll be a part two and we'll do it all over again in different stops and cities across the yeah. way. So. But but yeah. I'm I'm super pumped. I'm super pumped that this is happening. Yeah, so no, I want to thank you so much for oh. you know being a guest, like you to come back. I would love that. I, well, I'll mm. I'll see you in Vancouver uh, yeah. at the end of November when the documentary comes to town. That's for sure. But I'd love to be back back on when I and I can tell you about my new projects. Oh, I would love that, Rick. No, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Christine Blanchette, and I'm here at the Leo Wars on the red carpet at the Hyatt Hotel. And you can feel the energy in the room, and I'm so excited. I'm going to be interviewing some of the actors, filmmakers, nominations, or nominees tonight. So stay tuned for our coverage, and thanks for Nick behind the camera. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the Leo Awards. How excited are you to be here tonight? Oh, very excited. Yeah. Very, very excited to be here. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us, um, are you are nominated for uh, film tonight? Yeah, we, we both are. So I'm nominated for best screenwriting and Moheb is nominated for best lead performance in a short drama. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. So how does it feel to be nominated? Um, honestly, it feels great. It just it feels very validating, you know, in a lot of ways, especially when it's a short film. Just to know that it's it's being seen and people appreciate your work. So it just it feels great. It's very it's very it's very validating experience, you know. And it's so much work, but such a passion, right? Yeah, oh yeah. Especially short films too. Like um, when you have no money, it really is about like the passion and the team behind it that like puts in all the work to make the film happen. And what is the film about? Um, the film is about two boys who fall in love at a Muslim winter retreat but have to keep their relationship a secret. Um, so it's just about like the trials and tribulations of a first love and falling in love for the first time. Yes, and, and what has the feedback been like? It's, um, yeah. it's been great, honestly. A lot of people have come up to us afterwards and just felt like they really related to the story, just about how, just about like the, the like there's just the, you know, that story of just a forbidden love sort of thing. And it just, it, it relates to a lot of people in a lot of ways, especially coming out of, for people that have felt these things in high school or at a young age, you know? So it's, uh, it's been great. People really connected with the film and yeah, we're super happy. That's wonderful. I mean, love is love. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, really wonderful. Congratulations. And we're going to get a photo now. Yes. Hi, Mike. How are you? Good. How are you? We, I'm ex how excited are you to be here tonight? Very excited. Uh, I've been to the Leos a few times now, and it just seems to be growing in popularity. Very, very fun. Very, very glamorous and 
pretty sweet. So. Yeah, it's yeah. an amazing. The Leo Awards is such a great place to be. It is. It is very, very fun. I mean, it's our, it's our BC award show. It's like the best of the best in all kinds of uh, film genres, and just super proud to be here. So, yeah. So, Mike, are you nominated tonight? Yes. Can you tell us about it, please? Yeah, I'm. I'm actually nominated with a group of uh, filmmakers for a film called Part of the Pack, and it's a film about about wolves in BC. And so we're we've been nominated five times, so we're very excited about that. Uh, kind of, it's a, the film's about how people coexist with wolves, specifically wolves here in, in BC. And it was about a four-year-long filming ex experience, and so we're like super honored to be nominated and get to uh, celebrate the film here. Wonderful. And what's your role, Mike? So I was a co-director and the cinematographer as well. Congratulations. And and um, tell us about the concept. How did that come about? Like what? Um, I've, I've been working with a filmmaker named Isabel Grock, who's here as well tonight. And uh, she is a, for, a, a wildlife journalist. And so we'd worked on a few other films together already. Uh, long story short, we we're, we really want to do this wolf film together. She approached me with the idea about people and wolves and uh, how important it is to tell those stories about our relationships with nature. So that's kind of how that started. Yeah, and so important for the education, right? Big time, big time. Yes. Definitely, definitely. Yes, congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you.